Stuart here. One of the things I get asked quite often is what my approach to drawing diagrams quickly is and what my favorite drawing tool is. And while there are a lot of really good drawing tools, today I'm going to show you how to use PowerPoint. Uh, for more complicated, more detailed drawings, I'll use something like Draw.io or Visio. But for just quick, clean drawings that I might use in a whiteboarding session, uh, especially right now, we're doing a lot of things via teleconferencing. PowerPoint turns out to be a perfectly great tool. And so I wanted to tell you sort of what my process was. And I have to give a shout out here to uh, Edward Tuft, who has done a lot of work in talking about uh, visual design and envisioning information and so on. A lot of his ideas, a lot of ideas from the book Don't Make Me Think, which is about Christmas and simplicity and web design. Um, lots and lots of people have influenced my drawing style over the years, and I'm deeply appreciative of the time that they spent to explain to me what their process was. And so from all those sources, I've tried to extract a, a process flow, and I didn't really put this into concrete terms until recently, but I spent a lot of time thinking about what my process could be and how I could make it repeatable. I was sort of making a lot of drawings on autopilot and people would say, oh, that's that's a nicely drawn thing. How do you do it? And I, my answer was, I don't know, I just sort of do stuff. So um, this is my attempt to try to explain my drawing process, and yours will vary, but if you get ideas from this, then this video has been helpful. So I start out with an idea. I try to very carefully decide what I want the diagram to say. In other words, what key takeaway point should people walk away with after they look at it? And I define the space that's going to hold my drawing. Again, if I'm in PowerPoint or Visio or Draw.io, I have a canvas. It's two-dimensional. Generally speaking, architectural drawings are done in landscape because that way they fit the monitor or the projector in the conference room. But then more than that, uh, as you'll see shortly, I subdivide my drawing into kind of zones or regions, and that helps me define what my process is. Uh, and then I start dropping uh, shapes onto the space. And the, uh, what I try to do is I try to use in the same set of drawings a shape consistently. So I use rectangles and rounded rectangles and other shapes. And I just try to make sure that I'm doing it consistently. And then I supplement that with color to represent rules or types. And... So, you know, as I drop things on, uh, once you have shapes, you need to be able to connect them. So we want the, the, not only the connectors to have semantic meaning, but we also want to sort of convey, uh, the nature of it. And so adding, uh, annotations to that, uh, protocols or actions or payloads or whatever is very useful. And then I just refine on that until I have what I want. And one of the things that's really important is to have a self-discipline, at least in my case, because I tend to be a little bit of a perfectionist, in knowing when to stop drawing uh, when I have enough detail. And so the other thing I'll, I'll say is part of the deciding part is, and the defining step, is I often get into a diagram and find out that I have way too many moving parts and that fundamentally I'm trying to represent in one drawing things that different, for lack of a better word, zoom level. Having the discipline to stop and say, okay, I'm going to make a top level diagram and then I'll have some diagrams that then blow that out that represent a particular part or zone of my diagram kind of magnified to show that next level of granularity. And I'll show the bounding box and I'll show how that flows in and out to the other zones and inner drawings. And that's a pretty good technique. You know, some sort of pro tips we've talked about. And we're going to talk about it a little bit. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm actually going to draw three different kinds of drawings with the sound off. And I'm going to speed up the film because there's few things more boring than watching somebody draw. And then you'll sort of see from the flow how I do things. 
One last drawing tip. PowerPoint and Visio and Dryo do their darndest to help you align objects and shapes. They, you know, they snap to alignment lines. They show you when things are, are centered or top aligned or bottom aligned with other shapes. They do a lot of really subtle user experience things to help you keep things in alignment. And that's really important. And so is the, this idea of consistent size or proportional sizes of shapes. If, if shapes have equal purpose in your diagram, they should be a roughly equal area. And, uh, we want to avoid, uh, scenarios where we have a million crossing lines. And I'll show you a couple of tricks to, uh, do that. Uh, but probably the most important trick is if you have a good layout to start with that makes sense from left to right, the chances you'll need a lot of crossing lines unless you're trying to communicate that, the, you know, the many to manyness of the connectivity. Uh, there are tricks uh, to get you there. And then lastly, you want to do a Gaudi check. And a Gaudi check is stand back from your diagram and look at it and ask yourself if there are too many colors. Uh, or whether or not you have clashing colors. And again, in PowerPoint particularly, but also in Dryo and Visio, they have palettes of color that go well together. And so being able to look at that and go, I'm going to stay within this palette. I'm going to make subtle differences in the color between different roles is a nice way of making sure that uh, you won't create a uh, psychic trauma when people look at your drawing. So we're going to start with a basic network drawing of an application system. This is a quick telemetry system. You can see that over my secure VPN, I have processes creating telemetry that go to Azure Service Bus. I create a couple of consumer groups in my uh, Azure Service Bus, and uh, one group feeds the storage worker, which is putting the raw messages into blob storage, and the other one is feeding Azure Stream Analytics, and it is creating KPIs from the incoming telemetry data and storing those in Azure Table Storage. And then Power BI is able to mine both of those and I get telemetry reports and dashboards. So this is a nice, simple explanation for the overall uh, system and how all the parts fit together to form a solution. And you'll notice I spend a lot of time trying to decide around shapes and colors and uh, one of the things that I decided was that I would use dark green for the things that were paths, and I would use light blue for things that required developers to code. And then, of course, I used the uh, logo of Power BI from Microsoft to represent uh, the actual reporting and digesting tier. couple of things here you can see that I went out of my way to make the flow left to right, uh, that I spent some time aligning and si relatively sizing the shapes, and that I used some tricks in terms of connectors by parking one shape under another, like the consumer groups under the Azure Service Bus. And then when I wanted uh, there to be 
uh, a deliberate meeting that we were going to use Power BI to hybridize the data together to make presentations. I chose to use the right angle uh, line style. It sort of shows that it's actually coming together and sort of semantically in your head you think mixing. Uh, here's your basic sequence diagram. If you're a UML type person, you probably recognize this. So you can see the sequence diagram for search for parts. And I could probably clean this up a little bit more uh, by moving some of the components around. And in this case, we're going to decouple this arrow from the title. And that allows us to move this up here, sort of summarize the thing. And there's an implied caller here. Uh, traditionally, you might want to actually start with a lollipop. That's the green label on the top and the bar, green bar down the middle. But in this case, I think it actually is easier to read this way. So we have a post to part search. We validate our security token and throw an error if we don't like it. Uh, we then call our main searching engine and we convert that into the elastic format and we do an elastic search and it does some internal processing, leverages the various indexes. We accumulate the results. We convert them from the elastic format into the format we want and we return those to the web API, which then flows them back as JSON. So there's a really nice thing. You'll notice that at intervals during the drawing process, I stopped to align things, I grabbed groups of things, and using the nudge function in my tool, in this case PowerPoint, I was able to use the control and the arrow uh, to nudge things, and I can use shift and arrow to draw things. And the end result is pretty clean representation. Red is error, black is the normal flow. Light gray are things that are done kind of invisibly to us, but we have to know are happening. Um, the rationale being that if we want our search to work correctly, we have to do some work, uh, pre-work in Elastic to set up indexes and things like that. And um, then we probably don't want it back in the raw format. Uh, we want to translate it into something a little bit more business friendly and then return those, uh, that probably I enumerable of something collection and then emit that out the web API as answers. So here is a sample. Now I'm not saying this is a real world implementation, but it does show you the sort of flows and it shows you the drawing technique. Notice that I relabeled things at intervals and I thought about things at intervals and as I drew it out and I was refining what I wanted to say, um, I did a lot of uh, reformatting and moving things around and that's expected. Entity relationship diagram. Uh, or a DRD, ERD, depending on your comfort level. And we are going to use kind of this standard notation. And so one of the things I do is like the other pages where I had kind of a blank canvas, I have kind of a blank canvas here as well. And I'm going to grab pieces and parts of it and draw a simple system that represents entities and their relationships.
Okay, there's a really simple uh, entity relationship diagram. Uh, we have consumer segments that a customer can belong to. We have orders and orders can only exist uh, bound to a customer in the same way that order detail can only exist if there's an order. But we have an association to a product and the order has an order status flag, which we are calling out as an enumeration or a constrained set of value. And again, you can see that I churned a little bit on how I wanted to lay out the diagram. Then as I went, I tried to make it as uh, easy and obvious as possible. So there's a little quick tour on my drawing method.